Okay, this is my favorite segment of all time. Look at the guests that I have here. This is amazing. We have Steve and Shannon, and they're the owners of Lionel. And we have Pete and Ginger, and they're the owners of Melania. And then, of course, our very own Lauren and Libby. And they are here to tell us today about what it's like to integrate a pet into their family. And each, each type of family is different. And so each of you have different challenges and different opportunities. And so I'm so excited to you know, get your take on what was it like? What was it like to, to rescue a pet and to you know, integrate them into your home? So I'm going to kick off. <laughs> I, I think I'm the newest adoptive parent mm -hmm. in the group. And I, for so many years, didn't get a dog because I wanted to be a responsible adult and mm -hmm. I travel a ridiculous amount. And I always said that a dog would have to walk and feed itself to live in my house. <laughs> and so that seemed like the responsible thing to do. And then I put a stake in the ground to say I wanted to be at home more and work from home mm -hmm. more. And the easiest way to do that is to be responsible to someone else. Right. And that's when Libby showed up. And Libby is a registered emotional support animal. And she travels with me. She flies with me on the airplane. She goes through the airports like a champ. Amazing. She has been cross country uh, more than most people, <laughs> even at this early stage. And she is just becoming such a love. And we just had our 12 week adoptiversary. <laughs> and it's, it's like night and day from the first time you met her. Yes, it the first is. time you met her. And she is really showing up as, as this great little girl who loves to play and loves to have fun. But then when I tell her we're working, the ear go, ears go back, the tail goes up, and straight and away we ready. go. And yep. She's ready to she's go. She's on the job. It's been so fun for me to see where you guys started out and where you are now. Like, it's so clear, like, you're bonded. It's, yeah. real, it's really beautiful. At first, I wasn't sure. I uh -huh. thought I might just be a bridge for her mm -hmm. to her forever home. Mm -hmm. But then I realized, not just because we dress alike, but, <laughs> <laughs> but just because of how she's become such a part of my life. I can't even remember my life without her oh, now. It's amazing. Amazing. What about you, Pete and Ginger? Tell us about your story. Well, for me, rescue is the only thing I've ever known. I found a dog, loved him, but I never had one. 1988, I found a street dog in Mexico where it found me, pencil thin, matted hair, smuggled her, her across the border. She lived to 21, wow. cockapoo. Wow. And I've only had a, I rescued a blind dog out of the Orange County shelter. She had a day, that shelter, they don't, she had a day to go. Switched to cockers, a woman who gave us our, our first cocker adopted President Betty Ford, their last dog, wow. Brando. Great story, right? And then Brando and Nixon went to heaven at, in one month. And I, I never post on Facebook. And I posted, lost Brando and Nixon. It will be my first night without a dog in 30 years. I go, Maybe New Year's Eve. And this woman, Sue Croyer, calls me. She goes, Pete, it's 2 in the morning. I just read your post. There's this one-year-old cocker down in San Diego. And he showed me the picture, and I said, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that's, that is just amazing. And so did you go down the next day? Did you go? She, she brought, so rescue, you know, when you go, it's, a, it's like it's an adoption, mm -hmm. right? There's right. papers. Right. She, even though we were friends, we were colleagues at Chapman, she checked us out. And um, we got a purebred cocker for zero. Uh, and as Ginger will tell you, I mean, she was, it was typical, a beaten dog. Yeah. She, the mm -hmm. first couple of days. She would like, I mean, my house is like a postage stamp on Belle Island, and she would poke her head out of the bathroom and like see us and then run back in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I'm like, the house isn't that big. We can get to you. And she did that for a couple of days. And then mm -hmm. we took her for her first walk around Balboa Island. And she, I, her job was to bark at everybody who was mm -hmm. coming. And then after two blocks, she was like, okay, this is going to get old. <laughs> <laughs> And now, now she's running for mayor, pretty much. It, about yep. it. Oh, she's totally the mayor of Belmont Island. Wonderful. Well, that she and she looks so happy and healthy and just so so loved. Well, That's wonderful. We always say she has. Or her, we gave her the name Melania, but she thinks her name is either she's so pretty. Or, or I, had a I, I, I used to have a cock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, she is so pretty, definitely. And Steve and Shannon, tell us about your story with Lionel. Well, ours is a little bit different. I, um, we have 
a, another rescue of purebred golden that we rescued from the pound about six years ago. Um, but a few years back, I had graduated college and was kind of listless as mm -hmm many college grads are, and uh, decided to apply to be a foster with the group, the Southern California Golden Retriever Rescue. Mm -hmm. So um, he came to us as a foster. He was our third foster. Um, and he was just skin and bones, really sick. He had this tick disease called Ehrlichia. Mm. Um, and he was really, uh, we didn't realize it until later, but he was really kind of knocking on death's door there. Uh, oh. but. He kind of just bloomed into this sweet little baby boy, and and we couldn't say goodbye to him oh. when the adoption time came, so we adopted him ourselves. Oh, well, he is such a love, oh. you can tell, and he's so friendly, and yeah. just in the studio, he's the one that's, you know, like, basically like the, the strong presence, and like these little dogs are like running yeah. all around, and he's just and pretty he chill. And you wouldn't believe the difference from when we got him. He, uh, he was so loving, but just so weak. He couldn't even jump up on the bed. Now he can jump, for, you know, Over so the high. Bed. Uh, <laughs> he the bed. just really was unhealthy, and uh, yet so sweet. You know, mm. I mean, he really uh, was a very uh, lovable dog. So we really couldn't give him up. I mean, I was ready to keep him almost from day one. <laughs> no, he, to be fair, you want to keep most of the. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say goodbye to a foster, but he kind of just became one with the family. Mm -hmm. He kind of encourages our, our Golden, who's seven years old now, to run around because she was getting a little bit chunky for a while. And right. so he, yeah. he's got her running around. And, Good point. Um, she's got a personal yeah. trainer. Yeah, yeah. This dog has gone from, what was she, 40 pounds to? Yeah, he was around 40 pounds when uh, when we got him, and now he's around 55. So mm. we, and uh, our other dog has lost dog. about seven pounds or yeah. so. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good win-win. <laughs> and I did the it. other dog receive him just automatically? She's so good with other dogs. Yeah. She really, that's that's part of the reason we started fostering was because mm -hmm. I knew that she would do well with other dogs. She mm -hmm. loves other dogs. She's always kind of, when we go to the dog park, she kind of becomes the belle of the ball and all the dogs are running after oh. her. And so um, <laughs> I, I wanted her to have a, a dog friend around and uh, he, that's wonderful yeah. you know Amy all of us I think rescue uh, people we all think that the dogs know that they're more appreciative mm -hmm. you know, God bless pedigree dogs and all mm -hmm. that are wonderful but I don't think it's us professing they do know almost a little too much like she is so we didn't have kids. This is our daughter. That I know of. <laughs> <laughs> so we bring her to doggy daycare. Oh, gosh. And, um, and so she's so into us. Into, so Ginger would get on the doggy. Yeah, I mean, she is very fond of people. She kind of gravitates <laughs> towards them. She wasn't a huge fan of doggy daycare. She would just sit, like, mm -hmm. in, in the corner, in the naughty corner, as I called it, and mm -hmm. stare at the door until a human would pick her up. Mm -hmm. And so when, um, one day I was working on report cards, and I decided to have lunch in my classroom. So I went on to the camera website, and I was watching her. And she was playing with other dogs. I was oh, so excited. And like so running happy. around and rolling around. She was so happy. For my whole lunch period, 45 minutes, I just stared at her. It was so fun. <laughs> she's making friends with dogs. So I called Pete. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's making friends. You got to see this the cutest thing for 45 minutes. Aww. She's been playing with other dogs. His response was, she's sitting here with me. I didn't bring her there today. We're <laughs> <laughs> staring at another. <laughs> Well, that's too funny. One day, well, maybe. That, that brings me to my next question is, have there been any unanticipated challenges that you have had integrating a new family member? I would say it's, it's not just integrating a new family member. Adopting a rescue is adopting a family member that has a past, mm. that has a history, that has a story. It's not like a little puppy who's had mm -hmm. a golden life since, they were, since right. they were born. So I would say the initial challenge with Libby uh, which still is a little bit, it's only been 12 weeks, but if you don't know that there's a 30 pound dog behind the door, you think there's a Rottweiler barking at you. I see. And so not only do I no longer need a doorbell, mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, we're working on the unbark 
I see. because it's terrifying. Yes. And, she, and for her too, because she doesn't understand why people then run away. Mm -hmm. So there's a different lesson that has to go on, but I think there's a hyper awareness, I'm mm -hmm. sure we all share it, yeah. is we are super sensitive to how other people receive our dog. Mm. And my greatest compliment, for instance, is when I get off an airplane with her and as the people see us getting off, they're like, oh, we never knew there was a dog on this plane. Yeah. Yeah. So That's well the behaved. Greatest. And yeah. that, that is really amazing. What about for you two? What's been a, a challenge that you didn't anticipate? You do get their pass. She was she was beaten by mm. the it was a couple by the guy and to this day with guys, especially when they wear a hat. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. recalls and she she barks a lot. I had a blind one, I mentioned the blind dog. Blind dogs, she would get underfoot, he would uh, he would get underfoot a lot and ankle mm -hmm. bite and um, so yeah, I mean there's, they, they and I think maybe extra separation anxiety because mm -hmm. they've been separated before, maybe multiple times, like mm -hmm. with the fosters, right? And you keep, when they fourth, they mm -hmm. keep, and they think, oh, I just... He's like, this away. segment is too long. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's final, ready to, he's ready to go play. <laughs> now, but that, that's a great point. And what about you, Steve? Oops. Shannon? Um, I think one of the things is uh, she's... When we take her, or, yeah, I'm sorry. One of the challenges yes. is that you can never get I, I don't know. right on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> when we take him for a walk, he is uh, on a leash. He just does not accept other dogs. Yeah. He, he barks like crazy. He uh, and it's intimidating to the people that he's barking yeah. at. Yeah. Um, he's he's got a big bark, but he's a sweetheart, and mm -hmm. I think. He was probably, one thing we f I found out within minutes of him being in our house, I had him on a leash and I turned my head and he had chewed through the leash mm -hmm. in a second. And mm -hmm. so I think he was tied up a lot mm -hmm. when, uh, when he was wherever he was before. Right. Um, and so, yeah, his, his relationship to leashes and other dogs mm -hmm. in regards to that leash uh, is not the best, mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, he's an amazingly resilient dog. He 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 has like there are some times where I'll put my hand on his back and he gets a little jumpy because mm -hmm. he can't see me. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he's otherwise, other than the few quirks that he has that make it very clear that he didn't have a good start mm -hmm. to life, mm -hmm. he's just yeah. Well, he's mentioning a, the fact that. The first time I, I think it was, might have been after I was, it was on, the show. You were on the show. I took my belt off, and he was in the room, and he just went screaming out of the room, wow. like, Aww. you know, something about the belt. You obviously. don't know what's going to trigger them. Yeah. That that's makes a, sense. That's a thing. So, um, so for all of us that are, you know, for me, who, you know, I have Rocky, and and he has been ours since he was born, and we love him. And so this is really insightful for me. But I had wanted, I had really considered rescuing um, an animal, and I still am. So for people like me who are watching, like, what would you recommend doing to see if we're ready for that? What's one thing that we need to do to be ready for it? Well, I would say um, going to, you know, your local rescue, your mm -hmm. local, uh, you know, animal shelter, and seeing dogs, getting in the playroom with dogs, um, just to see how you do. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not sure. Uh, how you know how you are as a pet owner? I would highly recommend fostering. Mm -hmm. um, with there are tons and tons of rescue groups for every breed of animal there mm -hmm. is. Um, and the great thing about fostering is you know you get a two week trial, mm -hmm. um, and then you know if if it's a fit, then usually you know you know by two. Yeah, yeah you know you know sense. by two weeks. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, um, uh, Ginger, what about you? I was going to say fostery too. Foster I think we first. fostered her for a whole 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, she well. gets up ginger, get every week, and she goes through the week. All right, what's what's the plan for Melania from eight to twelve? What's the, so it's like having, especially when a one year old, a young child, yes. and you do, you can't just oh she'll be fine, and yeah. maybe she wouldn't. What if it's you know, there's something going on in the neighborhood and she's going to bark or... Get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have to... And our yeah. situation's a little bit unique. So we were dating and now we're not. So we're sharing custody with the dog, mm -hmm. so... 
Um, well, we just and do you sure find any challenges with going from house to house? Well, she stays at my house, uh -huh. and then while I'm it's on Belbo Island. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see. She's, she's getting the, the primo treatment, I guess. She so. definitely does. Uh, yeah, she knows all the restaurants and the owners. And <laughs> that's a good point. You rescued, mm -hmm. found an environment that she really liked. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take yeah, her. Yeah, that's right. And I could be like, she'll, uh, uh, no. the, I could be the guy and say, here, you, you take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, this, no, this and is, I know she's in such good hands with chivalrous feet. yeah when yeah. <laughs> I'm at work I know she's happy she's a good mm -hmm. hands with feet getting spoiled and that's the way it should be and yeah. sometimes yeah. playing with Libby on the beach mm -hmm. and yeah. how yeah. wonderful is they that they have become good. friends oh, well, so wow. what is I know our segment's gone a little bit long this is so so fun what's uh, any last words from Lionel Lionel, 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 Lionel what, what would you like to say no that's Libby Libby says Lionel back up Libby says Lionel Lionel quit wandering around Weren't you told yeah. that you were supposed to sit here? Yeah, <laughs> you're, not good, uh, you're not a very good guest. Uh, and Melania, how about you? What would you say? I don't know, but she's saying something. She's wagging her tail right now. <laughs> she's like, she I'm she done. Her. Let's she go great. play. She's she's so great. Great. I see food in the green room. That's right. And Libby, <laughs> Libby, any last bark for you? I think Libby's last thoughts are, Libby has lots of call outs to people who have been oh, expressly amazing. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So we have Sydney's Dog Grooming in Newport Beach and mm. Newport Hills Animal Hospital, who by the way, if you're going to adopt, they each provide the first session free to a rescue dog. Wow. And to Mobile Dog Gear, our greatest thanks. They have provided all these fabulous packs for all of our guests will go home today with one of the kits from mobile dog gear the website is shopmobiledoggear.com and we'll put that on the website for you so if you're looking to adopt or if you have a dog at home who needs some mobile dog gear <laughs> they're the ones to go to anybody else have some final thoughts well, thanks for all the neat stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you're very welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank we, you for coming on the show. We this always so said fun. we got to get Milani on TV. <laughs> and and Lauren and, and Amy is. made it happen. There we Thank go. You. Thank you all for coming, and we'll be right back. <laughs>